Hello and welcome back. What do you think of this new setup with this uh, chair and everything? To be honest with you, I feel like I'm a little underdressed. Much better. So a few months ago, if you remember, I did a review of the entire Carhartt Yukon Extreme series, comparing the new one with the old one. And if you remember, specifically in that video, I actually was very impressed by the insulated parka. Enough so that I said in that video and when I was testing all those things out that, man, I really need to break this thing out into its own review. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, this by far is the most impressive Carhartt item that I've tried. Now, that's a bold statement because they've had a lot of products which I have thought were really amazing. You know, and just off the top of my head, their steel cargo pants, I thought were just phenomenal. What they've done to the active jack. There's been quite a few products that they've come out with recently, especially that I thought were really noteworthy. This one, however, made a lasting impression. So over the last few months, what I've done to order, you know, kind of give a more in-depth review is some long-term testing. Now that was being out on the job site. And here in New England, through November, December, January, now at the end of February, we've had some pretty harsh weather. So I tested this thing out on the job site, specifically, we went and we had to survey a uh, 27 mile long stretch of railroad. If you remember me talking about this early on, we were doing the initial survey. Now we're doing the end survey for the as builts. Now during that period, the weather was somewhere in the teens. There was a, a wind chill factor. It was nippy by any, any stretch of the imagination. It was cold, all right? I wore this then, walking that whole distance. I also wore it a few times on some um, snowshoeing hikes that I did. I love to snowshoe and until recently we haven't had much snow and now it seems like that's actually a big problem for most of the country. And also other things that you just do outdoors during the winter time like snow blowing and shoveling and all that kind of stuff. I wanted to put this thing through its paces and that's what I did so I can give you a good overview of this coat because truly I feel that it is quite amazing and I think you'll agree with me by the end of this video. So let's begin like we always do with these things with the construction. Well, there's something wrong with this iced tea. Made from six and a half ounce, 500 denier Cordura nylon with a water resistant DWR finish, you can't mistake this parka for anything but workwear. It's apparent that this material is meant to take abuse and abrasion, the likes of which working people are exposed to every single day. It's definitely several notches above my old North Face parka in terms of outer shell toughness. Of course, being Carhartt, all the main seams are triple stitched and durability is clearly the main focus and most of the closures are hook and loop closed with the exception of the left chest pocket in the main zipper which happens to be a two-way. Now this kind of zipper is a bit of a no-brainer but you'd be surprised how many brands neglect this important detail. If you have to sit, whether it's in the cab of a truck or a piece of equipment, or even on a bucket while ice fishing, the ability to unzip the lower half of a long coat like this makes it much more comfortable. There's also a storm flap that you can secure over that zipper if you really need to batten down the hatches to keep the elements out. Along the parka, you'll find little sections of retro-reflective 3M scotch light tape in some key areas. For workwear, this is a great idea since your ability to be seen could quite literally mean the difference between life or death. I actually have to wear a reflective vest over my parka most days to comply with job site safety rules, but just a tip if you have to do this yourself, put the vest onto the jacket first before you put it on. It's much, much easier. There is no lack of pockets on this parka. With large hand warmer slash dump pockets, a vertical flap chest pocket, a zippered side access pocket, sleeve pocket big enough for a smartphone, and a huge pocket on the back, the likes of which I'm really not sure what you put in there. And I, I think that the best thing for this is probably gloves and a hat and things like that, or maybe even a tablet if you need to, but it's big enough to hold all that stuff. The sleeves conceal internal rib knit storm cuffs, which help keep the draft out or snow when you're working overhead. And if you've ever had snow fall down into your sleeves, then you know how important this is. Let's talk about that hood. It's adjustable. So using that little Velcro strap on the back, you can get the fit just right. On the front of the hood, there's a removable faux fur trim. And you know, I always wondered about these things. I see them on all kinds of expedition parkas and stuff. And I wonder if they were really functional. 
It turns out the fur isn't just for looks, and to be honest with you, I don't really care how it looks anyway, but it actually prevents heat loss by creating a dead zone around your face by changing the dynamics of the wind flow. Put simply, it keeps the wind off your mug. Inside, you'll find a top opening pocket on your right and a zipper pocket on your left, along with a drawstring around the midsection. This is another thoughtful feature and allows you to cinch it up, keeping drafts out and trapping warm air in. In use, the parka feels a lot like wearing a sleeping bag. You feel enveloped in the thick insulation and somewhat removed from the elements thanks to a pillowy 390 grams of 700 fill featherless down. Most Carhartt jackets have a sensation of donning fabric armor about them, but this is the first I've tried with this level of drama to it. You feel insulated in a bubble of warmth. Now sitting in your car, you get the sense of being wrapped in a down blanket, which might be cozy, but it does somewhat inhibit your movement. So I've gotten into the habit of removing this coat before getting into a vehicle for an extended amount of time. Testing this jacket, as I mentioned, meant wearing it in every circumstance that I could. And I gotta say that not once was I let down by it. As a matter of fact, more often, I was very impressed by how even the wind didn't seem to cut through it. It just really seemed impervious to those stabs of cold that you find in the winter. I also came to really appreciate the storage. I was able to keep my smartphone, a notepad, even a 70 to 200 lens in my pocket, basically everything. So you don't have to open up your jacket to get to the inside or anything if you don't want to. Everything is available from the outside which makes a difference when things are really bone chillingly cold. When working on the job, I found the hood to be a bit bothersome at times, to be fair, since it tends to flip up when you lean over. Other times I appreciated the coverage it gave me against my neck while wearing a hard hat. Working with tools in a parka is not ideal, and in the cold, almost everything is a compromise. You can't easily wear a tool belt, and the longer hem means that sometimes it feels a bit cumbersome. Again, this is very much the case with any insulated gear, from boots to gloves. You just kind of accept that things are going to move a little bit slower. But if your job requires you to wear a tool belt, this isn't the coat for you unless you plan on strapping it on top or wearing some kind of a shoulder rig. Finally, as I mentioned, I took this parka on a couple of winter hikes. The Cordura fabric worked really well against thorns and bramble, meaning that if you go off trail, your shell won't be torn to shreds. And the big pockets, came in handy yet again by allowing me to bring all my camera gear and stuff like that. It just was not an issue, and it eliminated the need for a backpack or a camera bag. On this particular outing, it was about 20 degrees and it felt like the coat was almost too warm. I wound up wearing it open for a good part of the hike, and this is where I really appreciated the water-resistant finish. Water just rolls off the thing. Snow brushes off easily, so before you get back in your car, you can kind of dust it off and it'll be dry by the time you get home. At $300, this is simultaneously the most expensive coat that Carhartt offers and one of the best bargains in downfield parkas. So it'll help us out to look at a few competitive options. Up first is the Duluth Trading Co. Ice Fog Down Parka. It's a good option. Also using 700 fill down insulation, reflective components, and little sections of Cordura reinforcements, but it's also a hundred bucks more at $399. Refrigerware also has a parka which looks to be promising, and I actually bought their Extreme Jacket a few years ago, which was very decent. Although it really uses all synthetic components, synthetic insulation rather than down, and it looks a bit technical for my taste, but it's not a bad option for about $225. And just for fun, a serious mountaineering parka from Mountain Hardware gives you an idea of just how extreme these things can get. At $900 though, it's unlikely you're going to wear this thing on the job site. So I truly feel that the Carhartt Insulated Parka is one of the best deals going. And to be honest with you, I've never felt that level of warmth on the job site before. But of course, I want to know what you think. I mean, I really feel that Carhartt knows how to hit the sweet spot of quality and price. You got to keep in mind the end user here. Now, not only you could use this thing casually if you wanted to, and I do, but this is really meant for people who are on the job, which is kind of what all their stuff is. So when you're talking about $300, Sure, you could spend, you know, $900 on that mountain hardware parka if you wanted to, but it's $900. Are you going to put that on the job site? Probably not. You have to keep in mind who the end user is. Who are they actually making the stuff for? And that's the hardworking men and women across the globe. Speaking of which, I want to know what you think. What do you think about this parka? How do you keep warm on the job site? Do you layer up? Do you like to, you know, I mean, everybody has different techniques. So I'm interested to hear yours. So please let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, 
I'll catch you later. I can smell notes of, um, is that Cordura? No, maybe that's duck. I think that might be duck. Uh, hmm. Let's see here. It has a, uh, a bit of a, of a selvage denim start, but it finishes with a nice kind of chrome excel kind of sweetness. Very good. It always goes down smooth. <coughs> what time do we board the Concorde? Call Jack Nicholson. I want to set up a card game. Walmart? <laughs> Absolutely not. I only shop at Target. Thomas, ready my Bentley. Who put pencil shavings in my pipe? <laughs> oh, you're incorrigible. 